Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee. It's very good to be here with you today. And man, do I have a project for you today. Uh, a little background. I actually have two 2008 Mac Pros. One that works and one that doesn't. In my troubleshooting over that one, basically a parts machine at this point, it has come down to me to that there is a serious logic board problem. So, I'm going to try replacing the logic board. Now, this is kind of beyond anything I've ever done. I, I've had logic boards in and out of Mac Minis, but nothing quite like this. Now, I, I confess I'm nervous about it, but the way I'm trying to look at it, right now I have a Mac Pro that doesn't work. If I mess this up completely, I'll have a Mac Pro that doesn't work. What do I got to lose? Well, I hope you'll be interested in taking a look. If you are, please stay tuned. This project is going to take at least a couple of days. Uh, about six hours after I did the introduction as I found that much like on the 2006 the screws that went in here did not want to move. If I was trying to get it to go I dinged that up a little bit that's no big deal. Uh, however unlike the 2006 on this one bathing it for about six hours in liquid wrench and coming in here and renewing the application uh, got them to go. Fortunately, I've got a short screwdriver that enabled me to get in there. Grabbed it with these pliers. These are great. Uh, grabbed it with these pliers. Uh, these are great. And yes, with the patience and the consistency of putting on liquid wrench, uh, we ended up getting it off. Interesting to note, this is the cover for the CPU heat sinks. It does come off much, much more easily on this machine than on the 2006. The 2006 looks the same, but it's clipped on. This this would appear to be held on with magnets. So really just disengaging it back here, pulling out, and we're all good. Uh, I did while I was waiting for the uh, liquid wrench to take its effect. I took the graphics card out. Uh, and you know, now we're going to just have to put the machine onto its back here and take everything out of it in preparation for removing the old logic board. Stay tuned for frequent updates. Alright, now my first step here is going to be getting the fan out. Uh, the 2006 had this same fan held in with one screw right here. Fortunately, I've got an extender for this driver that enables me to reach down to it and just barely get enough room to be able to turn it. Uh, 2008 has got one additional screw in here, uh, which I should be able to get again with the small driver here. I'm going to have to fiddle with this a little bit, so we are going to make this into uh, an independent clip. Uh, so hopefully we will be back with those screws out and probably the fan out. Stay tuned. Well, yeah, my screwdrivers worked well. The screws came out. Uh, and with the screws removed, that fan pulls out very, very easily. All right, next step is going to be the CPU sinks, which are affixed with screws all the way down there. 
for this operation. We need this long hex wrench, which can reach down there. Now, here it's pretty easy, because you can see them. On the 2008, I can actually see these screws over here a little bit more easily. Uh, we also have connectors to the logic board. That's the heat sensor connecting the logic board there. And down in here, you can't really see it, but the heat sink uh, sensor for this processor connects over in here, whereas on the 2006, it connects back in here, out of the RAM cage. I was able to get it back in. Uh, of course, you may remember that RAM cage simply wouldn't come out. All right, so I will unscrew these screws off camera, and we'll be back with those out. Just a quick update. I have found, I don't know how well you can see, oh yeah, you see that red thing down there? That is a flashlight. By putting that in, I can actually see this screw much more easily to get the wrench in there. I don't think we're quite there. No, we're not. Uh, but that is handy. And if I move it over there, and by angling it, I can see the screw up there too. Uh, so that's going to make this a little easier. The RAM cage on the 2006 seemed to block it more. Well, I shall be back. Stay tuned. Well, it's a pain, but it's doable. Uh, one note, unlike the 2006, there's this wing thing on this heat sink. And I don't know how well you can see it, but looking particularly at the clips here and here, uh, the orientation of the two CPUs is different. On the 2006, they're exactly the same. Now, my new board does not have, well, new to me board, does not have CPUs. Uh, I thought it was going to have CPUs, but yeah, my, mis my mistake, I may have been thinking of another listing. Uh, so we can try reusing these CPUs. I have upgraded CPUs I can put in. Uh, now, I've already tried that with this machine. I get the same problems with any CPUs, which is making me think it isn't the CPUs. So we're going to try on the new board with the other CPUs. So I am going to take these out. And then we tackle... The RAM cage. Now, two of the screws are out already. You know, before I got any further on this, I wanted to make sure I was going to be able to get them out. We have a screw there, a screw down there, one here, and one here. That's two more screws than we found in 2006, which of course didn't make any difference in the 2006 because they couldn't get them out anyway. All right, and there's uh, the fan here. There's a connector for the fan that will need to be unplugged. But again, I will do all of that. And once I've done that, and of course remove those CPUs, uh, oh, and there's the airport card up here. That's going to need to come out as well. Uh, but we shall then be ready to tackle disconnecting this logic board. And there's a ton of connections, of course and then connecting in the replacement. Uh, that's probably going to be tomorrow's project. I think actually getting everything out of this is going to be enough for today. So I, w I shall get on that. You stay tuned. All right, to get the fan out, Disconnecting the fan from the logic board was not difficult, uh, but there are three latches that hold the fan on the end of the ram cage. The only way to get the ram cage out is to disconnect those latches and push the fan into the ram cage, as I have done. The problem is you can't see the latches, <laughs> 
So getting them out, you know, it's a matter of guessing. I don't think I broke anything, and maybe I'll actually get to go back together. But here we are. It's a part. And this is going to be a place to stop. Uh, I will get back on this tomorrow. And we will go about disconnecting all of these cables, unscrewing all of these screws that hold that logic board onto the case. All right. So, yeah, that's going to be tomorrow, but for you, a split second as usual. All right. Stay tuned. All right. It is now the next day, and I'm about to begin disconnecting the old board. Uh, all these cables all have to get unplugged. The speaker here will have to be removed. Airport cards got to come out. None of those exist. Uh, I want to make one point here. Uh, the guys that you'll find for doing this uh, generally are for the 2006-2007 Mac Pros. The 2008 is very, very similar, but not exactly the same. I pointed out some differences. I'll point out another one here. You see this bare chip in there. Uh, that's the memory controller chip, chipset. Uh, the 2006 version has one, but it doesn't run nearly as hot. And it's got a black heat sink on it, kind of similar to this. Uh, and that, that heat sink is pretty much permanently attached when you get a new replacement board for a 2006-2007. Uh, it's going to have that heat sink on it. Uh, Alright. This is the heat sink. <laughs> Obviously, this memory controller chipset runs a lot hotter than the version for the 2006. And you've got a really big heat sink that goes on that. So that's got to be removed. Uh, the uh, temperature sensor's got to be unplugged, etc. Uh, so th there are distinct differences. You can follow the guides for 2006, 2007, but you do have to be very aware of that which is different. All right, just thought I'd make note of that. Stay tuned. All right, everything is unplugged. The speaker's off. Now there are eight screws here, here, here. Here, down here, here, down in there, and there's still dust in here, and one there. With those screws removed, the board should be free. I hope. Stay tuned. By differences that are not mentioned in tutorials, there are more screws. Taking out those eight which were supposed to free the board, did not. However, there's a screw here. Try to get it on camera here. Yeah, here. And I'm going to show. There. Okay, I don't see any others. Yeah, again, all those tutorials are based on 2006 2007. Okay, more unscrewing to do. Stay tuned. It is now free from the case. Trying to get it out is very tricky. There's a 
uh, small board here for the front I.O. Uh, and there's a SATA card, uh, SATA cable that plugs in there. You have to unplug that from this board in order to be able to lift the main board uh, up and out. Uh, it's a fiddly process. It takes a while, but it is doable. I'm not going to try to record it. Stay tuned. Well, the new board is in. And man, was that a struggle. It's a tight fit. Getting it into position without burying, burying any of these cables is kind of a nightmare. Now, I did encounter difficulty getting the airport card off the old board. Those screws just plain wouldn't move. Now, I'll eventually try some liquid wrench and see if I can get them off. But, fortunately, I had an old Wi-Fi card left over from one of the 2010 Mac Pros I upgraded in order to get uh, AirDrop to work. Uh, so, I managed to... You know, I just put that one on. It should work fine. Why... Apple has to make these antenna connectors so difficult, it's beyond me. And for whatever reason, uh, there was no airport card in the new board, but Bluetooth was there, so I just left that. I, I also replaced the NVRAM battery, uh, and I'll tell you, that spring that is holding that battery in, is a nightmare to get off but i managed to do it and it's a fresh battery so we should be good for quite a long time to come now i just have to figure out where all these darn cables plug back in well i'm gonna get at that stay tuned well i managed to get everything plugged in there was one cable that did get buried under the board. However, I was able, once I disconnected all of these again, to manage to pull it out without having to pull the board out again. Thank the Lord. Uh, getting the speaker back in was a real pain. Because uh, you can't See, there, there, there are posts in there. They're attached to the bottom of the Mac Pro. Uh, and these screws go into those posts. But you can't see them. So trying to get the, the speaker positioned exactly right so that you can get the screws in there, which is important. I mean, the, the speakers are dreadful you know, using other speakers are not a problem. In fact, it's desired. Uh, but the screw, the second screw for the fan, for the front fan, is on the speaker. So you've got to get this thing in place or you can't secure that front fan. Oh, man. Well, anyhow, I am going to stop for today and let things sit for overnight and then tomorrow morning or afternoon when I get to it we're going to finish putting this back together so please stay tuned